So let's go ahead and work out the warm up real quickly. Uh, it's just a review again over the idea or concept of combining like terms um, and distributive properties. So remember last week on Friday we learned that the distributive property set that we are going to take whatever's on the outside and we are going to distribute it to each of the components or expression parts that are on the inside to each of the terms. So we have the term 3x and here I'll zoom in on that so that way it's easier for you guys to see in the back. We have the term 3x and we also have the term negative 2. That term is a negative so what we're going to be doing here is multiplying 8 times 3x, which is going to give us 24x. And then we're going to be multiplying 8 times negative 2 which is going to come out to a negative 16. So there's our final answer, 24x minus 16. 24x minus 16. For problem number two, we have 3x minus, and then we've got a distributive property. So that means we're going to have to distribute first. We're going to have to do our distribution first. So this 3x is just going to come straight down in our problem. We're not going to do anything with it yet. We're not going to do anything with it yet. We're going to distribute a negative 2, that minus 2 acts like a negative sign. So we're going to do negative 2 times the 4x and then the negative 2 times the positive 6. So when we multiply negative 2 times 4x comes out to a negative 8x. Rohan, what did you just decide to do? Any reason why? No, let's not. Let's actually focus on our work for today and not become a problem. Okay? We're then going to do negative 2 times 6, which is a negative 12. Negative 2 times 6, which gives us negative 12. This is not done. This is not a simplified answer. We can simplify it even further because we can actually go ahead and combine the 3x minus the 8x. These are like terms here. 3x minus 8x, we can actually work that out. If we do 3 minus 8, 3 minus 8 is going to come out to a negative 5x. So we'll get negative 5x. The minus 12 doesn't have any like terms to it, so it's going to come straight down as just a minus 12. So there's our final answer, negative 5x minus 12. You have to simplify it as far as you possibly can. You have to simplify as far as you can. Okay, same concept with problem number three. For problem number three, you have a value that's outside of the parentheses and completely removed from it. It's going to go ahead and just come straight down into our problem because there's nothing for us to do with it. This negative 3 needs to be distributed to the 2 and it needs to be distributed to the negative 4. So we're going to do negative 3 times a positive 2. Oops. And then we're also going to do a negative 3 times a negative 4x. When we do negative 3 times 2, that comes out to a negative 6. When we do negative 3 times negative 4x, that comes out to a positive 12x. But we're not done. We still have stuff that we can combine together. We still have like terms with this 3x and this positive 12x. The 13x plus this 12x is going to come out to 25x. The minus 6 has no like terms to it, so it just comes down as minus 6. And there's our final answer. <coughs> you
You have to make sure that you know how to simplify. You have to make sure you know how to simplify. Combine those like terms together. Okay? All right. From here, we're going to go ahead and get into addition and subtraction of linear expressions. Adding and subtracting our linear expressions. So you're going to need your pencil for today. You're also going to need your green and your purple. Go ahead and get those colors out. Okay, so we got our green, purple, and blue out. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about linear expressions. And linear expressions, it's the algebraic expression in which a variable is raised to the first power. It's an algebraic expression that has a variable raised to a first power. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of examples of what some linear expressions look like and what some nonlinear expressions look like. So 5x. 5x is considered to be a linear expression, but the minute that I put a, 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 a power other than a 1 to it, like if I do 5x squared, it's no longer a linear expression. 5x squared is no longer a linear expression. Okay? Um, 3x plus 2, that's considered to be a linear expression. But if I change it to 3x cubed plus 2, that's no longer linear. It's nonlinear. Okay? If I even put x in the denominator, so like x minus 7, that's linear. But if I do 1 over x minus 7, that's considered to be nonlinear. If I put it in a denominator, that would be considered to be nonlinear. <coughs> so that's what we mean by linear versus nonlinear. So what we are doing today is we are going to be adding quantities of linear expressions together. So if you noticed, it's very similar to combining like terms. It's a very similar process of combining like terms where you're taking your first part of your expression and adding it or subtracting it with the second part of your expression. When we come back from lunch, we'll continue. All right, taking a look here at problem number one, we have two linear expressions that we are trying to combine together through addition. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on what is a like term in the first quantity compared to the second quantity. So a like term for the first compared to a like term in the second. So our first set of like terms, we've got a 2x and a single value of x. Those are considered to be like terms, and we're going to go ahead and add from one set to the second set. So that means we are taking 2x, and we are going to add a single value of x. So I'm going to go ahead and put a coefficient of a 1 in front of it. And when I combine that together, that's going to give me 3x. 2x plus 1x comes out to 3x. Okay, so that's our first set of like terms. That's our variable. Now we also have a constant set of like terms. So I'm going to go ahead and put a purple circle around a plus 3 and a purple circle around a plus 4. And again, I am adding between those two quantities here. So I'm taking a positive 3 and I am adding a positive 4. And that's going to come out to an answer of a positive 7. So there's my final answer. 3x plus 7 is my simplified set for problem number 1. Again, you're taking your like terms from your first linear expression and combining it with the like terms from your second linear expression. You're just combining those linear expressions together. Benson, take your seat. I said, focus and take your seat, okay? All right, let's take a look at the second one. <coughs> this one is a little bit different. Here, we're actually focusing on subtracting. So again, we're focusing on the first terms that are like terms. So we have a 2x 
and a 5x. And this time we are subtracting between the quantities. So I'm going to put a box around my subtraction sign. So what I'm doing is I'm taking 2x and I'm subtracting 5x. 2x minus 5x is going to come out to a negative 3x. Then we've got a positive 3 that we are subtracting by a negative 12. A positive 3 minus a negative 12. So I'm going to do 3 minus negative 12. And 3 minus a negative 12 comes out to a positive 15. So I'm going to put plus 15. And there's my final answer. The operation between the parentheses is letting you know what you're doing from the first set to the second set. You are either adding the first set to the second set or you are subtracting the first set from the second set. Okay? Go ahead and take a moment to get those down and then we'll go on to the next page. All right, let's take a look at the second page on the back. For here, before we can start combining like terms from first set to second set, we have to distribute first. So go ahead and write that down, that we are going to go ahead and distribute. And we're going to distribute this positive 3 to both the 2x and to the minus 4. Okay, we've got a 2x and we have a minus 4 that we're going to be distributing it to. So that means we're doing 3 times 2x and we're doing 3 times negative 4. 3 times 2x is going to come out to 6x and 3 times negative 4 comes out to a negative 12. So we now have the expression 6x minus 12. Okay, that's all we did is we distributed first by doing 3 times 2x and 3 times negative 4. That gives us 6x minus 12. We still have the rest of the expression, which is plus, and then the quantity of 3x minus 7. Now we focus on combining our two linear expressions together through addition. So we're going to focus first on the variables. We've got a 6x and a 3x. And again, we are going to add those together. We're going to add those variables together. So we're going to do 6x plus 3x. And 6x plus 3x comes out to 9x. Now we focus on the constants. We've got a negative 12 that we are going to add with a negative 7. A negative 12 that we again are adding with a negative 7. A negative 12 plus negative 7 comes out to negative 19. So we have 9x minus 19 as our final answer. I want you guys to try number 4 on your own. Don't do number five yet. Just try number four first. Let's see how you do with that one. Okay, what's my first set of like terms? What's the first set or what am I going to put in a box, a green box? Which one's the two terms I'm going to put in the green box? Who can tell me? Angel, what are the two terms I'm going to put in the green box? 5x and 9x. And what operation am I going to be doing here? I'm going to do 5x plus or minus 9x? Minus. Because what's the operation in between, guys? It's a subtraction sign in between the, uh, the parentheses. So we're going to subtract those. We're going to do 5x minus 9x. What do we get when we do 5x minus 9x? 
negative 4x. Good. So everyone should have negative 4x so far. Okay, and what am I going to put in purple? The, the 7, positive 7, right? And a negative 4. Am I going to add or subtract them? Subtract, right? Because it's still subtraction in between them. It's still a subtraction sign in between them. Okay, so I'm taking the 7 and I'm going to subtract a negative 4. 7 minus negative four is not positive three. It's not negative three either. Seven minus a negative four. Remember, we don't do double negatives, do we? It's positive 11, thank you. It is a positive 11, so we should put plus 11. We should put plus 11. We've got negative four X plus 11 as our answer here negative 4x plus 11. Okay. All right, let's take a look at problem number five. What am I supposed to do first? Taking a look at problem number five, what do I need to do first? Kyle? Distribute. Distribute. And in fact, I've got distribution for both of them. And since both of them can be distributed, I can go ahead and finalize those two quantities. I'm going to take the positive 2, and I'm going to distribute it to the 3x and to that negative 4. So I'm going to do 2 times 3x and 2 times negative 4. 2 times 3x is going to give me 6x. And 2 times negative 4 is going to give me negative 8. But I also have distribution that happens here. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute that negative. Instead of keeping the minus sign in between the quantities, I'm going to distribute that minus 6 to both of them. So then I can get rid of parentheses completely. I'm going to do negative 6 times x and negative 6 times a negative 7. Negative 6 times x comes out to a negative 6x. And negative 6 times negative 7 is going to come out to a positive 42. So now I've completely gotten rid of all of my parentheses. So now I'm just going to focus on my like terms. My first set of like terms is that 6x minus 6x. I have 6x minus 6x. What is 6x minus 6x, guys? What's 6 minus 6? Zero. So that's going to come out to 0x. Then I've got negative 8 plus 42. Negative 8 plus 42. That's going to come out to a positive 34. So you can leave it as 0x plus 34, or you could just write your answer as 34, because you don't have to write the 0x. All right, let's go on to the next page. <coughs> Here we go. All right. So for here, we've got a triangle and it says the perimeter of the triangle is 10x plus 6. We want to write an expression that represents that missing side. Guys, who can raise their hand and tell me what does that mean when I say perimeter? What is perimeter, Rohan? Huh? It's just one side of the triangle? 
It's all the sides of the triangle, right? If you add all the sides of the triangle together, that's going to equal the perimeter. So if I know the perimeter, I can take away each of the side measurements to find out the missing side. I could take away all of those side measurements and I can find out what the missing side is. So let's write that down. You can do perimeter. Perimeter is going to be the same thing. as side one plus side two plus side three. That's what we know. We know perimeter is we can add all three sides together and that's gonna equal the perimeter. But we were given the perimeter and we wanna know what is the missing side. So what we're going to do instead is we're gonna take the perimeter and we're gonna subtract side one and we're gonna subtract side two and that's gonna leave us with the measurement of side three. That's what side three is gonna equal. We take the perimeter and we subtract the measurements that we know and what's left over is the missing measurement. So the perimeter, the perimeter of the triangle is 10x plus six. I'm gonna subtract the measurement of side one. Side one is three x minus three. Notice I'm putting those in parentheses because side one is supposed to be a single value but we don't have a single value, we have an expression. So we put expressions inside of the parentheses. Then we're gonna subtract side two. Side two is also an expression, so we're gonna subtract five X. And what's remaining is going to be the measurement of side three. So now we're gonna use what we know about adding and subtracting with linear expressions. I'm gonna take the values of x's and I'm going to subtract them. So I'm gonna do 10x minus 3x minus 5x. -5x. 10x minus 3x minus 5x. So what's 10 minus 3? 10 minus three, guys, seven. And then seven minus five, two. So all of this together comes out to two X. Don't forget your X. All right, now we've got the constants. We've got six and we're gonna minus a negative three. Six minus negative three. Six minus negative three. Remember, we don't do double negatives, so it's really six plus three. Positive nine. Good. Positive nine. So there's my final answer. Two X plus nine. That's the measurement of side three. Side three equals two X plus nine. <coughs> which makes sense. If I write that here, if I say this is two X plus nine and I add all these together, okay, I can add three X plus two X plus five X, that comes out to 10 X. And I could do negative three plus nine, that comes out to positive six, so we get 10 X plus six. All right, problem number seven, you wanna buy three hats and two shirts. Three hats and two shirts. The cost of a hat is 2x minus 3. The cost of a shirt is 5x plus 1. I want to know what my final cost is. So when I'm writing this out, I want to buy three hats. Plus, I want to buy two shirts. I want to buy three hats and I want to buy two shirts. The cost of a hat though is 2x minus three. So this becomes three times 2x minus three. 
plus I want to buy two shirts. So that becomes 2 times 5x plus 1. We've got to distribute. So we have to do 3 times 2x and 3 times negative 3. That comes out to 6x minus 9. Plus, we got to distribute positive 2 to the 5x and positive 2 to the, uh, to the positive 1. 2 times 5x is 10x. 2 times 1 is positive 2. So we now have 6x minus 9 plus 10x plus 2. Let's go ahead and combine those 6x plus 10x. What's 6x plus 10x? 16x. Good. Then we've got a negative 9 plus a positive 2. What is negative 9 plus 2? Not 11. Remember, when they're opposites, they're opposites. you got to do it differently. What is it going to be, Kyle? Negative 7. Negative 7. So we get negative 7. And there's our final cost. Our total cost for the three hats and the two shirts is 16x minus 7. Now, let's say that in our wallet, we've got 20x plus 11. Yes, Malia? Sure. In our wallet, we've got 20x plus $11 so that we can make our purchase. So I want to know how much money is going to be left over after I purchase my three hats and my two shirts. So if I'm making a purchase with my money, what's going to happen? What operation am I doing? Subtraction, good. So we're going to take how much we have, which is 20x plus 11, and we're going to subtract the amount that it cost us, the final cost, which was the 16x minus 7. This is how much we have in our wallet. This is how much the cost was for the three shirts and the two hats. We're going to subtract those items. So we're going to do 20x minus 16x. That comes out to 4x. Then we're going to do a positive 11 minus a negative 7. Positive 11 minus negative 7 is going to come out to a positive 18. So that's how much money we'd have left over in our wallet, 4x plus 18. Okay, in Google Classroom, if you go to Google Classroom, there's an IXL skill. Go ahead and log in. Start working on that IXL skill for adding and subtracting linear expressions.